Hey, everybody, I am Minister Kristen, and welcome to our new podcast, Blending Faith and Medicine. So let's just start here. So we're excited because this podcast is actually, it's overdue. Um, We are two different ministries coming together, and we're super excited that God has chosen us to do this ministry together. We're super excited about this podcast because we're coming together to bring you everything that God has given us to give you, the do's and don'ts of marriage, some medical advice and just the things in the the medical world and um, things in the, you know, the biblical world, biblical truths and strategy. We're just here to give you what thus saith the Lord. Um, So we're pretty excited about that. So how about we start with some history on the both of us? Share with us your ministry. Uh, my ministry, I would say, is it's called The Believer's Doctor. And it started around 2019, right around the COVID uh, pandemic. And it was a time where I was going through some pretty uh, rough things in my life. And I just felt God press upon my heart that um, I need to just pray for my patients. That's good. And I started my ministry in the pandemic as well, Mm -hmm. um, 2019. And um, God always told me that I was going to be in ministry, just didn't know how, where, when. Um, And he said 30. And when I turned 30, lo and behold, I heard a sermon titled, Will You Answer the Call? And I said yes immediately. And my life went crazy. Um, And that's when I began to get into ministry and then God, you know, put me on YouTube. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what life was like before we met. Oh, wow. And yeah. I'll start with me first though. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. when God called me at 30, I was actually, you know, in my first marriage and it was, we won't get into details, but God was calling me out of that. And I ended up getting a divorce, separate then divorce. And through all of that, I continued to put God first. I continued to trust God. I continued to serve him. So for somebody, you have to do that. No matter what you're going through, right, babe? No matter what your struggles are, you have to keep God first because God is going to honor you doing that despite you being hurt, despite you being attacked, uh, despite the opposition in your life. You still have to keep seeking the kingdom because because that is where the fruit is, the blessings lie, because God honors that. He knows it's not easy, right, babe, to be yeah. hurt, to be yeah. broken down, but your best ministry will come from that. It will. Your book will come from your hurt. Come on now. Your, your pain will produce your purpose. So don't give up. Don't give up. But that was me. I you know, had two children. I was divorced. I was living by myself. I had to start over. God may be calling you to start over. Where are you now? I want you to look at your current situation. Situation. It's God asking you to start over. So God asked me to make some major leaps of faith and I was scared, but I knew that I had to do it. And so being on YouTube, um, which was a shock to me, it was new to me because I had started with one subscriber just or nine subscribers, one, then nine subscribers. <laughs> then it went to when I got back on in 2019, I posted a video, woke up and had over 1K subscribers. And that shocked me. Right. So that's how it's going to be for some of you guys. When you get up and say, I'm going to do what thus saith the Lord, God will take your little and he will give you plenty. He will give you plenty for if you just trust in him. And so I began to teach. I began to preach. I got licensed, you know, went to school. Um, God put mentors in my life. I started working with women, coaching, and that's what led to me mentoring. And then that's when he and I met uh, early 2023. I had a healing mentorship. And so God said, I want you to step it up this time. I want you to aim higher. And for many of you, you have to aim higher. You're wondering why it's not working. It's not clicking. God is simply saying, aim higher. You are not average. You are not average. You are above average. So what you're doing, your project, right? Your book, your ministry, stop making it average. It is above average. So God said, aim higher. So I aimed higher and I knew, okay, this time around, I want professionals. I want experts. And that's when we crossed paths Mm -hmm. and I asked him to do my healing mentorship and he became one of our experts. And so we started 
working together, um, dialoguing. We had a couple of meetings. And then before you know it, God began to download into both of us. Hey, this might be a potential, you know, partner for you. And can I just say that, um, we waited. So, you know, there's a whole biblical, you know, connotation of God hates divorce. And there are some people that don't believe in, you know, second marriages. And we were one of those people. We waited. We waited for the other party to get it together, to get it right. We want to, we just want to address this now. Not that we have to, because God is our ultimate savior and redeemer, but we want to put it out there. Um, Your salvation is more important than a marriage. Your salvation is more important than a marriage. So what does that mean? Whether you're married, single, divorced, remarried, God cares about your soul. So don't idolize marriage. Don't get stuck in bondage in a marriage. If a person's abusing you, misusing you, don't let the the preachers use the scriptures to keep you stuck in an abusive marriage. Um, Go, run. And God will restore you and, and put you with somebody who's going to help you grow and evolve and heal. So we just wanted to put that on the table. Yeah. We both believed in waiting for those partners, for those parties. We yeah. were you know, praying, fasting, waiting on God. We were patient. We waited a couple of years. We waited years for for the parties to get it together. And God yeah. ultimately, before we even met, said, no, th- this is it. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. And so we moved forward. We take yeah. God's covenant very serious. Yeah. And, I, and I will say this here because I, I imagine we were very much similar. I remember when I would see people get divorced, I would say that person just didn't love enough. They just didn't care enough. Mm-hmm. And how could they do that? And I never thought... I would be Mm -hmm. in a situation that I judged myself. And I tell you, you don't know what happens when someone closes their door at night, okay? Uh, Some people, you go home and your spouse is gone with no explanation. What do you do with that? We never know why someone marriages falls apart, but That's God right. does. Mm-hmm. And I've made it my business to stay out of anyone else's mm-hmm. business. I got enough trying to keep my household together. Yes. I just pray for their restoration. I pray for their healing. But let me tell you, you can't be in situations where you're abused or beaten. Um, you know, God wants you healthy, healed, and restored. And above all, we don't know why people get divorces. And it would shock mm-hmm. you why people leave. It mm-hmm. would shock you um, why someone would do the things they do. And it mm-hmm. would shock you the pain someone experiences mm-hmm. as yes. they hold on. And I remember when I was going through my divorce and I prayed, God told me to stay and to actually suffer and wait. And so, let's say it because God yeah. wants to give that party a chance. That's for so real. the suffering yeah. is not just, oh, I just Thank want you, you to suffer. Yeah. Let's let's clear that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God will give the party, yeah. that other party, time yeah. to get right yeah. with him, get right within themselves to help mm-hmm. rectify the marriage, to to uh, reconcile. And for some people, reconciliation happens. Yeah. And for some people, it doesn't. And then there are people that they refuse to start their ministry because they feel I have to do this when my partner comes. I have to, I have to wait for my kingdom spouse. No, you have to start your ministry, your book, your business. But Ruth yeah. met Boaz in the field. Yeah. She was working. So are you working? Yeah. Are you working? He who finds a wife, right? Yeah. Um, so we're actually going to get into our scriptures. Let's do that okay, because we got good. into that's this good. and then we didn't do our <laughs> scriptures. And so our yeah. scriptures are coming from Proverbs and you guys know these scriptures. So Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtain the favor of the Lord. And I'll say it one more time. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. And then we'll go ahead and we'll get the next scripture. Ladies, I love that. I love that scripture. Yes, I love it. Go ahead with the name. Oh <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I would like to read uh, Proverbs 19 and 14, which states that um, house and riches are in the inheritance of fathers and a prudent wife is from the Lord. And one thing I will share, that's one scripture I really stood on, Hego Ben. Uh, that's one scripture I really stood on as I was waiting for a wife. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit, but things come when you least expect it. And so yes. I knew that if I was ever to get a wife, it mm-hmm. wouldn't be because of me, the way I look. Oh, that's I good. Have. Mm-hmm. It would be because God that's good. gave her to me. Mm-hmm. And so my goal simply became to look as much 
like Jesus as possible. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I remember I prayed to God, God, let it be apparent that you're with me. Yeah. Let it be yeah. apparent by the mm-hmm. wife I get that yeah. I didn't get her on my own. Mm-hmm. It wasn't what I said. It wasn't what I did. Yeah. But that it's apparent that you gave her to me. Yeah. So I just even stopped looking and just yeah. focused on God himself because I knew yeah. it wouldn't be of anything that I said or did. Yeah. So, so but we both, okay, so preparation. So yeah. Let's talk about I, that. before okay. we met, about maybe four months before, I was in a church. I was in a part of an association that I just didn't want to be in. It wasn't good for me. Yeah. Um, it wasn't a good fit. So I was having a hard time leaving. Um, I had endured some hurt with leadership. And so on my birthday, um, months before we met, God gave me this this moment of just clarity. I went and took a weekend for myself. I cried by the lake. I released. I It was like my war room that weekend in that room. And God set me free from some things. And I felt like a true purging. I felt Mm -hmm. like God really released some things from me. And in that moment, I knew, God, you're all I need. And I'm excited to start ministry again because he said, get back up. I was doing a lot of things, coaching, mentoring, preaching, teaching on YouTube. And I shut it down. I shut a lot of that down because of hurt and disappointment. And, um, I picked it back up and that's when he had said, you know, do the mentorship, but I prepared, I prepared. I stopped thinking about a potential partner. I put God first. Um, I got back into the work. I got back into, you know, ministry and that's when everything began to happen. Right. So just going through that time of preparation, um, we want to encourage you is necessary. The moment you stop idolizing these kingdom spouses and, you know, these marital fasts and these marriage groups and get in the Bible. God will teach you how to find a husband. God will teach you how to find a wife. You don't have to get caught up into the social media kingdom spouse stuff. That's that's true. And, you know, um, I I think you talked about it in terms of just working on the work of God Mm -hmm. and that Boaz met Ruth in the field. Yes. Saw her working. So when I, when I saw you, I saw you working. I saw Mm -hmm. you doing something. I saw you doing the work for God. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's what drew me to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And and I think um this is this is good because really, again, when you let go of that thing you want the most, yeah. God will release it to you yeah. when you let it go. Um, now let's talk about the realness because although things happen very quickly, things happened quickly when God is in something. It will move. Yeah. It will move with speed. Now, that was something that I wasn't prepared for. Okay. I kind of poked fun a little bit at these, you know, <laughs> expedited marriages. I'm not going to lie. When I heard about, oh, I got married in two months, three months. And I'm like, Lord, help me. Because I'm a very logistical person. Like, I I, it, I need to see it kind of thing. And, and so I just was like, okay, we going to do this maybe a couple of years. And, but the Lord was like, no, this is happening. And this is happening with speed. And so we felt that we felt the buildup. We talked on the phone every night. He was in Illinois here. I was in New York and, um, immediately, and this is, this is good. Immediately he started to cover me because yeah. let's talk <laughs> about it. I was in a bad spot. Y'all I yeah. was in a bad spot. Mm-hmm. Your girl has some debt. <laughs> okay, I didn't have money in the bank. That's Every good. week I was saying, God, I'm going to go back to the temp agency. Because remember, guys, I have put things down. I have put a lot of things down so the money wasn't coming in. I'm not big on getting rich off of ministry. So I, I always said to God, God, I would rather work than to get yeah. Rich off of your people. Um, if people choose to give, then then that's great. If not, that's fine. So when he met me, I was actually at a deficit. It wasn't good. So when God began to press upon us, this is a good match. This is it. God went to him. I didn't have to go to him that's about right. giving me, um, you know, uh, how do you want to say it? Just just funds. I had to bless her, y'all. Where the funds at? How about that? <laughs> but, yeah. where, where, you know. So Here's he thing, blessed me, good. and and 
But yeah. here's the thing. You don't have to chase it. The blessing will find you. Yeah. And God will go to that man for you. Yeah. You don't have to do nothing but work. Ruth yeah. just did what Come she on. was instructed by Naomi. And God blessed her through Boaz. God talked to Boaz. And God talked to him. Yeah. So when somebody's for you, they will immediately change your life. Yeah. They will begin to change and add to your life. So he took me out of debt. He put money in my bank account. And God was giving him this. It wasn't me asking him. Mm -hmm. We were not intimate. We had not met yet. It was strictly off of just him being a provider and covering me. And, and, and because of me doing the work of the Lord, God had instructed him to begin to cover me. Yeah, this is so good. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I think for women, if you're looking at um, a significant other, just men are simple. Mm. Right. Uh, what do you uh, mean? Man. What do you mean by that? <laughs> but I, I, what men I mean are is, simple. Yeah. What I what I mean is, if you're involved with someone, mm -hmm. a man will see a need and meet it. Mm. So if you're involved in someone, you have a need. You you shouldn't have to ask that guy, that gentleman, that guy is going to look at that, and next thing you know, that need will be met. And you're right. You know, God was telling me to meet a need and. Not that I wrestled with it, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure that it's right. Yeah. Because you have to have wisdom when you're moving in spaces of acceleration. You mm -hmm. have to have wisdom when you're covering someone as a yeah. man. You mm -hmm. can't cover everybody because you can get hurt in the process. Yes. And so I just had to go to God in prayer with that. Mm -hmm. But there there was results from that covering. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even before I found my, my wife, I wrote in my prayer journal what I wanted my wife to look like, what I wanted her to sound like. I wanted her to sing. Um, what I wanted that hair to look like. Uh, it, it was it was in detail and God met that. But I say that to say this is that um, as a man, you know, our responsibility is to cover. And women, That's if good. you are looking for a significant other or you're involved in someone and they're not covering you, you That's have to good. really, really, really evaluate that relationship. Yeah, because good. men are simple. Mm -hmm. They cover what yes. they value. Ooh, they cover what they value. ladies, that was a good one. They cover what they value. But if you don't value yourself, how can God send someone who will value you? So it starts here. Yeah. And the minute I really began to see, and, and, and I mentioned this before, stop seeing yourself as average. Yeah. Stop seeing your ministry as average. Stop seeing your book as average average, what you do as average. You are above average. You are extraordinary. You have value. Mm -hmm. And when I realized I had value and that I was selling myself short because men want you to settle for 50-50, uh-uh, we ain't 50-50, okay? You want a provider, you and yeah. and honestly, we're not here to shame anybody. If you're not a um a traditional household, it's about what you want, ladies. If you want to be a stay at home mom, then pray for God to send you a provider who will allow that. If you want to work, you can have that too. So it's really all about what works for you yeah. in the confinement. Yeah. Um. Of, of marriage from a biblical standpoint. So we're not here to alienate or, you know, single yeah. out any type of other marriage, marriages, obviously between heterosexuals. Let me just make that clear. Yeah, um, sure. But, but um, you know, but you have to value your yourself. Yeah. Now, yeah. can we talk about the authenticity of the growing pains between us, right? So, um, you know, this thing is real. Yeah. This thing is real. We got into, like, a huge fight before we pre-recorded this here. Um, I didn't want to know that. <laughs> I mean, because we're both, we're both, we both have strong personalities. Yeah. You know, we're yeah. both competitive. We, we're both leaders. Mm -hmm. We both have ministries. So we've had to really mm -hmm. find our way yeah. in coming together. And we both had some past wounds, some past hurts that we needed God to really not only heal us, but Teach us how to love each other, yeah. right? So do you want to touch on some of the growing pains very lightly on what wow. we've had to overcome? So for me, I think a lot of the growing pains were just seeing a reflection of myself. Mm. And I, I know sometimes when I get frustrated uh, at Bay, it, it was something that it was actually in myself. It was like looking at myself mm. and, it, and it caused me to take a closer look at the things that I did. But um, what was it? What? It's okay. You can keep going. <laughs> and also, uh, with regards to growing pains, there was issues that I had to deal with within myself. Mm. Um, as hard as it is to say it, I had my own trauma that I thought mm -hmm. I dealt with. 
And, um, you know, I tell you, you know what someone's like uh, at home and when mm-hmm. they're driving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, I just had to do a lot of self-reflection. Yeah. This is real. Yeah. This is very yeah. real. This marriage our home, you know, a lot of you guys, you get on and you see people talking about kingdom spouses. You see people talking about, you know, how they met, but you don't really get the real deal. You don't really get the real scoop. And yes. this is the real Listen, deal. You're going to get rid of that kingdom spouse in about two months, but. You have to know that is no, I didn't mean like that. We'll take that out. No, we got to take that out. We can keep that in because you you said two months. How about one month for me? You know, like both of us, there was a time when we both was like, this ain't it. Yeah. This God, this this ain't it because this is looking, this is looking too hot. This is looking too real. Yeah. But God got us through it. Like in life, your your partner is not here to just appease you. Your partner is here to help you grow. That's right. To stretch you. And, you know, one thing I will say, even with the growing pains, one thing that's kept us together is just, uh, you know, I, I, I say I, I wouldn't even be married still if it wasn't for you because really you never let the sun go down in your anger. Mm, that's important. Like as hard as it is. Yes. Because I could, you know, mm-hmm. I, I'm sure I can be challenging at times. And, um, but really you just, yeah. you, you always make up. Thanks, babe. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So that's important. <laughs> Um, yeah, 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 that yeah. that's important. It definitely yeah. is. Like, I just I feel like, um, you know, when you're coming together as as a as one, you know, it's just so important to keep God as the center that's and the focal point mm-hmm. of your marriage. Can I ask you some questions. Yes. Okay. First question. Um, when did you, um? When you were going through your dark season, how did you know that God was going to bless you with a husband, although you couldn't see them? And how did you maintain your your faith in those moments? Did God speak to you or? or well, for me, it's actually a long, drawn out story. Guys, he's throwing this question on me. So there's like a short answer, then there's a long answer. But I'm going to do a a medium answer, okay? Okay. So honestly, prior to YouTube, I did not know about Kingdom Spouses. I did not know about that, all the videos, all that stuff. I am very simple. You know, I'm not like, you know, oh my gosh. Like I never prayed for a husband. I never, never. I That's not how I am. I'm very practical. So when I got on YouTube, I started seeing these videos on kingdom spouses. And that's when I started saying, hmm, I guess maybe I should pray for God to help me with a partner and, you know, somebody to help me with my ministry. And that's when it began. And to be honest, that was a a trick of the enemy because I started having dreams about, you know, just weird men. I started seeing letters and names. And I think a lot of us got caught up into that kingdom spouse movement. So that's it guys. And so we're excited because this podcast is going to be real. It's going to be real. We're going to be really giving you, um, the best of us and what God gives us to give you. If you want to send us your, um, questions or if you want us to discuss certain topics on top of what we share, please do. We'll air episodes every Sunday around 6 p.m. and we'll let you guys know, uh, 6 p.m. CST, and we'll let you guys know if that changes. But this is our first episode. We're pretty excited. We're going to drop part two after this, okay? Um, So let us know your thoughts. I'm going to pray us out and then we'll see you guys for our next episode, part two of how we met, Okay. okay? So, Father God, I thank you for bringing us together, God, for this amazing podcast episode. God, be with us. Be with those who are watching now and those who will come after, God. Please continue to bless us, God. Bless our ministries, God, and just have your way in our lives. We thank you, God, and we honor you, God. And in your matchless name, Jesus, we say amen, amen, and amen. 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 God bless, guys. Amen.